Right, hi everyone. Today we've got a bit of a Celtic hero on the channel. It's Peter Grant who played for Celtic for 15 years between 1982 and 1997. I won't even tell you how many of those years I was even alive, Peter, and we'll, we'll just move, we'll move swiftly on. Um, you won two league titles, including the famous centenary year, of course, three Scottish Cups as well. Peter was also a first team coach at Celtic under Tony Mowbray. You've also managed Norwich, Fulham as a caretaker, and more recently, Alloa Athletic and Dunfermline Athletic. And you've given up some of your time to chat to us today, Peter, so it's great to have you on. A pleasure. Thank you very much for inviting me. Well, was that a good wee intro? Did, did you like that? Did I do it justice? You did it justice. You know, you were giving me a few extra years there. I was like, ah, 84, I got it first team uh, against Rangers on his debut, obviously. And then that was me right to 97. Yes, it's, it seems as if it was yesterday. Great memories, even through it low. It was a difficult time, a really difficult time I went through there. Um, very disappointing years, many, many disappointing years. But people keep saying, would you change it? And the, the answer is definitely no, you know, because it was fantastic times for me. And as I say, wonderful, wonderful friendships that I've kept to this day. I, I need to start, rather than doing the own intro, I need to let the the interviewee do their intro how would you have described yourself as a, a celtic fans favorite a, a an icon oh not at all um as i say uh, probably one of them that's the way i'd like to be described you know i was fortunate enough that it was a boyhood dream that a lot of us have um up to the stage that in fact i went first day at high school the teacher asked me what i was just wanted to do um and i said i wanted to play for celtic he says, yeah, dream on you and a million other guys. And that was fine, no problem, I understood that. But great credit to him. I made my debut at Ibrox against Rangers, as I said. But the following week, we played Hibs at Celtic Park and the same team was waiting outside to shake my hand and say, you told me you were going to do it. Yeah, so that that was a bit of great pride, but it was fantastic for him as well. You know, So Walt Tain, as I say, is a great achievement for the school and that at that particular time. And that's the way I looked upon it. But it was, just, it was a dream and I loved every moment of it, even though it was tough and, as I say, really harrowing times at times. Um, but, as I say, I wouldn't have swapped it for the world. And you're still living the dream because you're chatting to me from 67 Hail Hail, Peter. So the dream's still very much going on. Well, we've got you on mainly to chat about Matt O'Reilly, someone that you know quite well. Just, you know, from Fulham, just before we get on to that, if you, if you don't mind, just, just a wee bit on your current situation. Um, how, how are you finding the, the life since leaving the, the manager's job at Dunfermline at the end of October? Dunfermline, I loved it. I must admit, I really enjoyed it. It was tough times, I think, seven draws, Four defeats. I think they won four in the cup and lost one in the cup. I just couldn't buy a win in the, the league. Um, as I said, a great board. Uh, Ross MacArthur was brilliant. Uh, so I have no complaints here whatsoever. I find it difficult. You see, I spend a lot of time watching games, but the day to day, I really miss. You know, there's no getting away from that. You know, I can see why people don't retire because I, I, find, I find it really, really tough. I must admit because I love that environment. You get up every morning. You're going to your work to something that you love doing. You know and as I say, that's never, ever changed. So you try and make up for that. I try and keep myself fit, you know, as much as I possibly can. And then, as I say, taking as many games in every league as you possibly can. Because people say, do you fall out of love when you lose your job? Absolutely not. And you want to get back on that horse right away. I'm not one of these guys, so I'm waiting for the right opportunity or whatever. That's not the case. I just love football. I love being involved in it. And I'd love to get back into football. And that's what, as I say, you keep, as I say, you keep learning all the time. It doesn't matter how old you are, how long you've been in the game. You learn something every day, and we're seeing that this year with Celtic playing a slightly different way with different types of players. Also, just just we know you're a, a you know a huge Celtic fan. What have you made of Ange Postecoglou so far at the club and, and the job he's done? European football aside, let's let's just forget that ever happened. <laughs> Listen, I think the thing for me, he epitomises what a Celtic manager should be. You know, he shows a, a he's got an aura about him. He knows what he wants from his players. He respects his opponents and the way he talks about the game is refreshing. He gives it, it's not just your bland answers you get, you know, from him. You know, there's a lot of thought goes into it and I think that's the way he's got a clarity about him, which I think you can see that with the way his team plays and you can see how the message he's got across to his players is very clear. And great credit to him. Well, obviously, one of his famous things at the start, he can get a breather at 95 minutes or at the end of the game and you can see that with the way his team plays you know when he, he tries to keep energy on the pitch at all times but i've been very very impressed and i think the way his team plays 
as a base, you're expected to play at Celtic. You're expected to try and win and play with a style week in, week out. And that's never changed. I think he's brought that, but I think his mannerisms going about the way he deals with the press, which is important in Scotland, I think he's handled that exceptionally well. Yeah, I think a lot of Celtic fans, if not everyone, would agree with that. that that's a manager. What, um, what, what, what does a player need at Celtic? And, and what, from your experience, obviously being a much loved former Celtic player, what do Celtic fans like in a player? Is it commitment? Is it quality? Is it scoring goals? Is it a bit of everything? I think exactly what you said at the end there. A bit of everything, you know. As I say, you, you've got to give them a hundred percent. So supporters will always forgive you as long as you give your maximum, trying to do your best. They still give you criticism for it. They want that quality to go with it. You know, I mean, you can run about like a dafty, which I used to do. You know, and <laughs> you get what that's fine. You need that little bit of quality. And I, I was fortunate enough to play with some players with some wonderful, wonderful quality. And I see, I see that in the Celtic team now. I've always been a big fan of Rogic because I, I, my always disappointment thing for him was I thought he never lasted ninety minutes. I think that the fact that the managers managed to get more time out on the football pitch is a fantastic for us as supporters because oh, you've got match winners on the football pitch. I always felt we were taking them off them in games we needed them most, you know, um, because you always know he's got a little bit of magic, he's always got a little bit of creativity. And as I say, I've been very impressed with him and the way the managers have been able to get things out of him. But you've got to have a mixture of everything. You give them everything, you try to win every game. Celtic was always a football club that you had to play well and you had to win. Winning was important, of course, but they like you to play with a style as well. And I think you see that with this team at this moment in time. I, I, I've, I, if I can tick off like effort, I've got effort. Quality, I'm, I'm str struggling at quality. So I think I would make, you know, about a quarter of a good Celtic player. Um, what, what about Matt O'Reilly then? Because he, he's the guy we want to chat to you about, a guy that you know relatively well. Quite similar to Rogic, I would say, certainly in, in the way he plays the game. T tell me about when you first kind of cast eyes on, on Matt O'Reilly. I think I'm right in saying you were Fulham's lead professional development coach and you gave him his big break in the under-18 side when he was just 15. So you must have rated him quite highly. I was a, I was a head coach of the 23s and I gave I brought him into the team at uh, 16. And it was an under-23 league. So wow. it, went, it went to under-23s then, so you could have some first team come down or whatever at any time. They were trying to help that wasn't getting too old. And I put Matt in at 16 years of age. There was no doubt of his talent. My big, big concern for Matt was his fitness levels. Because he always had an issue, a slight issue with his, his back. And I think it was because he was growing so quickly. He was a big lad. You can see he's got a funny gait. He's still got that gait, as you see the way he runs. He's got a funny gait, the way he moves about. He always had an slight issue with his back at very, very important times. Like usual, we'd want to keep himself fit, like pre-season or whatever. But you could have never put him up with the first team at that age. We're sessing him, and you could go up with the first team because he could run and he could beat anybody. He would, if then they want to put on, you'd be ready for that. Is that uh, Ryan sessing him? Yeah, Matt yeah. Had done with that at the same age. Quality-wise, Matt had all the quality in the world. I mean, he was like one of these boys. If you give the ball, he was like a quarterback really. Then, um, if the ball at his feet, he could do it. I, could, I thought he could see passes. He could see pictures better than anybody. A lovely, a wonderful left foot. Against the ball wasn't that great. The young man learning his trade, you know, that's the way it was. You know, you were learning your trade. So I used to play with Winnie's midfield on his own. I only played with one midfielder. I played like a 4 1 3 2 sort of situation. He was the one because I felt I wanted him to get the ball all the time. Um, so his receiving skills would get better. But also the fact is seeing people running off him because that was part of his game that he wasn't very good at. You know, it was against the ball. The biggest thing for me over the last wee while, I've been watching more so when he's went to MK Dons, getting the games in, playing all the games, and I'm seeing things in him that's great credit to him, you know, because I see him scoring goals at MK Dons where he was winning the ball high, putting people under pressure, you know, his first pass was forward, that he was getting goals himself and having that creativity, because you always knew he had it, but my only concern as a young man was, because you always complain that I always complain the fact that a lot of young boys don't play a lot of games. We used to be playing school team, you name it, representing your town, county or whatever. We were doing all that. Matt was never in a position to do that. I didn't think he could train as often as he should have uh, or could have through the injuries or the, the, the lack of fitness. And they, as I said, the more the growing spurt he was going through. But if he could get all these things together, there wasn't a player there. There was no doubt of that. So great credit to him. 
I was obviously away by the time uh, he left Fulham. I'd been away maybe two years by then. And I was very, very surprised at that, you know, that other clubs hadn't picked him up very, very quickly because there was no doubt in his talent, but maybe, maybe people still had that issue that maybe he wasn't playing enough games at that particular time. But he proved that last year to me. So when he was getting, obviously getting mentioned with Celtic, I was delighted because he knew a quality, quality footballer. On, and I think he's shown in the small period of time he's been here. Yeah, it, it was a, a back injury, am, am I right in saying back, back yeah. issues that kind of held him back? Yeah, no, as I say, I think it was more because, and I'm, I'm sure at one stage they were saying there was a, maybe a slight fracture at the bottom of his back as well. And I think that was, maybe Matt will correct maybe, maybe on that, but I'm sure it was at that particular time was our concern for us. But we, we felt it was because he's grown spurt as well. And it, as I said, he's got a funny gait, he's got a funny shape, you know, he's the way he runs, you know. And I, I, I haven't actually noticed that, Peter, but now I'm not going to be able to unsee it when, I, when I look at him. Things, you know, but it, it never stopped him, you know, you know, but when he was on the football pitch, you were just hoping they could put, manage to get through this period. And that's the fine line as a young football player, you know, it looks as if Fulham gave up him, obviously, in the respect of that, because obviously I wasn't there. I know he says he gets offered a new contract and whatever, but there's one thing I wouldn't have been, if, I, if it's a fat Matt O'Reilly, he wouldn't have been going anywhere, you know, at that particular time, because you knew he had the talent, and if his fitness levels could get back and get the games, he was too good to be playing the, the levels below. He had to be playing first-team football. That was going to be very important for him. But if people don't see you down in England, they don't take you in loan. The football's slightly different as well. You have to get the right club. MK Dons was perfect for him because of the style they play under Russell and the, the new manager, I can't remember his name, the new manager as well. The, the style was perfect for him and it was perfect for the build-up to the way the manager wanted to play at Celtic and the style that Celtic wanted to play. So in that situation, the combinations come back to help him, but you've got to give him fantastic credit for taking that opportunity to come out of it, go and work hard yourself away from it and then get the opportunity to go to MK Dons and grab it with both hands. What does that say about him? I mean, when you saw that he'd left Fulham to effectively become a free agent, um, I think right at the start of the pandemic as well, so, you know, a, a difficult time for everyone. He's spoken about training in the, the, the park with, I think, just his girlfriend. Um, you know, difficult times for a footballer. What Were you surprised when you heard that, or, or was that just what you expected, knowing him? No, it's what I expected, knowing if he was fit enough. But my only concern was, because I've been away, it's very difficult because you can think there's different reasons why people get let go or whatever. And I just thought at that particular time, maybe he's had injury issues. I thought that was the only reason. I, well, I was sure that could be one of the reason, you know, that Matt wouldn't be there. But the fact he's away and done it himself and kept working extremely hard and keep himself. And I know he says everybody in the pandemic had to go out and get some exercise. Yes, but it's not easy. When you're a footballer, you're out of work. You know, that's your li livelihood. That's all you've ever known as a young man, you know. And I think you can see MK Don's get the benefit. Celtic are going to get the benefit as well because he's seen what it's like to be out of work because that's their job, that's their profession, that's all he knows in that respect. And what he's done in there, he's probably said, well, I've seen that dark side. I never want to go back there again. You know, I'm going to give my maximum to try and be the best I can be. He proved that to MK Dons with his performances and he's got the opportunity to come to a massive club and I know the way he speaks about it, uh, Celtic, he, he looks at it, you, you'll see that star on his badge and say, well, wow, he's got 60,000 people watching him week in, week out, desperate for him to do well. The old firm game, or the Rangers Celtic game, I should say, the way it turned out for him was perfect, you know, because Celtic winning, Full Celtic back, full Celtic supporters performing the way he did. Nothing gets any better for you than that. And as I say, I was delighted for him that Celtic supporters seen the type of player he is. And he's only going to get better. He's only going to get stronger. And he's only, as I say, he's going to get better by playing the more games he plays, the more bigger competitions he plays in, cup finals he plays in, league championships you've got to fight for. All these things are going to make him a better player. But you can tell by the way he talks about the game, the way he goes on about his life in general, he's got a level head on him and he's, got, he's a willing listener and that's what he's always been anyway. So that sets him in fantastic stead to keep improving. Yeah, I, I want to get in just briefly to his personality because I think he's quite an interesting player, the, the way he speaks. Before that, d did you know, we had a, a press conference with, with Matt last week and, and you actually came up on it. You were Matt was asked about w whether you'd had anything to say about Celtic and we'll, we'll let you see the clip. Matt, can I ask you as well, mm -hmm. uh, 
He would have played under Peter Grant out for them. Mm-hmm. Now Grant is not short of a word or two about Celtic. <laughs> did he ever speak to you about Celtic? What did he say? And now that you're here, did it measure up to his expectations of Celtic? Um, I don't, he didn't speak to me individually about it, but I remember one analysis session where we were just on the computers and we watched an old clip of him scoring for Celtic with a... I think he had a mullet at the time, so we all obviously found that quite funny. But um, no, other than that, that's probably the only thing I've seen of him at, at Selwick. But obviously, I saw him celebrating with so much passion, and I think from that from that video, I knew how much it meant to him, which was which was cool to see. He says you had a mullet. We'll we'll, we'll leave that aside right away. Well, is that true? I don't think any Celtic supporter will guarantee that's right. I had many haircuts, you know what I mean. So I must have had a mullet somewhere along the line. And you, you you were showing clips of of you scoring for Celtic to the Fulham lads. Is that true? Because it's amazing. If so, no, I can guarantee I wouldn't have been showing them. They'd have been looking it up. I wouldn't have been. Me <laughs> that's for sure. You know, I was never that good a player to put my clips up. So I always let them. So they must have been searching to see if I really did play. You know, because um, as I said, somebody told me for me. Said I might be saying that you scored a goal with a mullet and whatever. I said, ah, the boys, typical the boys, because they used to have their video sessions. They're analysing their games and. You try to give them that as young players to analyse different aspects of their game, in and out of possession, whatever. But there's obviously a period that they're obviously going on. You can go into everything now, so you type in your name and the all accounts, everything comes up about you. So I remember them coming out that day and say, what a goal you scored, and I love that hairstyle and all that. So it didn't seem that long ago, but I'm glad that Matt's brought it back up. <laughs> he clearly made an impression because he was he was saying that you um he, he saw your your the fire in your belly and the passion that day and he said that's something that he took from it. Yeah, well, I think as I said, the good thing for me being with the twenty threes was that was the thing I used to demand from them, and it wasn't it was what I was brought up with. And I know things have changed, and people say that football's moved on in different ways. It's just come around in a big circle again. But it's that drive every day, get out of your bed to come and train, you know, and be the best, you know, perform well. And I think the likes of Martin that go to Celtic, that's the way you have to be. You have to, what you've done last week means nothing. It's what you do next week is important, you know. And I think that's that's the way as you put it to bed, you win the game, you go to bed, you get up, you get away again the next day again. And maybe these sort of things was a drive and a determination. And I'll look and I'll listen to him up, uh, talking about, as you say, talking about the fact that he train out and he's going. And you can see he's got that little bit of hunger in his belly, you know. And I think that oper- separates a lot of the players. A lot of players have technical ability, good players, you know, but they fade and die because they can't handle the expectation of the daily occurrence of training and performing every single day. He can because he knows the other side of it. He's had a little touch off it. And I think we're getting him at a very, very good time. Yeah, I think I think you're right. I think he realises now. Maybe he did when he was signing, but I think that Derby night on the the second of February against Rangers, you could tell after that game that he he was he was almost shocked about just you know what have I walked in with all due respect from NK Dons to to Celtic against Rangers, um, sixty thousand fans, etc. They have him up doing media quite a lot, and and you can see why because he's you know very articulate. He's 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 not like your kind of average twenty one year old footballer nowadays with with the guarded answers. I mean, you, you mentioned that question about the you know the the country that he could he could play for, and uh, you know is he targeting the World Cup this year? I think most footballers would have have played that down and gone, oh no, I just need to do my best for Celtic. He was very driven, and he said, yeah, I'm not going to lie. I've had thoughts about the World Cup. I, I won't lie. I mean, <laughs> it's definitely. One of like my my bigger targets, I'd say, because um, I I feel like it's possible, you know. I mean, I'm playing for a club such as Celtic now, so I don't think it's out of the question. He's not your average footballer. He seems really, you know, really switched on and and as I say, really articulate as well. Was that something you 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 kind of realised quite early on with him? Yes, because he was quiet. You know, there's a lot of noisy boys when they're younger. You know, um, and had a good mixture. You know, there was, uh, but there were most of them were young. Um, Diff- all different backgrounds. Matt was more the quieter one. And I, and I always concerned me a little bit. Not that he was quiet. I just I thought, do you think if the issues were holding him back a little bit with his injuries and whatever, the, and the boys were out training? Because there's nothing better than playing on a Saturday and whatever, you know. And you're missing out that little bit of game time. Even the training pitch was difficult. But as I say, the way he talks about it, he thinks about it, he's articulated it. That's the, the things he says well. Because he means them. That is, he's saying, yeah. you know, Matt's the sort of boy 
the better players he plays with, the better player he is. Because he sees, he sees the pictures. He can make the passes. So if somebody's in a space and people talk about half spaces and all that, you know, you're finding, people always say, play, find the space to play. And that's the, the secret of good footballer. But I see that in the way he talks. He's thinking about it. He knows the answer. If the question's getting asked, he's already, well, no, I'm ready for this, you know. I'm not, as you say, I'm not going to sit back here and say I'm not interested in the World Cup or I'm not interested in playing for X, Y, and Z. He knows. He wants to play in the best arenas, the best players. He'll look at Celtic Park and think, wow, what a place. Oh, the Rangers Celtic game, fully 60 odd thousand. Coming out to that, he must have been sitting all Celtic supporters. You know, what a perfect night, winning 3 0. This is what you dream of. Nights like that, as a young football player, when you're practicing, when he's running in that park himself, these moments will be coming back to him, you know? And I think that's why he said, time to think. He said, time to appreciate where he is in the respect of that when he's been out at work. He said, the worries and the concerns. And I know, as anyone does, we'll all say, no, no, I never really concerned me because I trusted my ability. Yeah, it's fine. You trust in your ability. Because other people trust you, you know, to give you that opportunity. And he was fortunate enough that Russell and that turned him in and gave him that. And they, they reaped the rewards from it. But then he's kicked on from that. And as I said earlier, because of the way they played, they set him up fantastically well for coming to Celtic because of the way they played. You know, and it was the expectations that Celtic are, you know, and the style they play. So they've all been fantastic for him. And as he says, and I've read his interviews, he, he, people wanted to sign him. He's thought about it, what was going to be best for his next step. You know, yeah. an opportunity to come at a club like Celtic Football Club. It doesn't happen very often. You know, and he tamed that. And he's grabbed it with both hands. And I think he's only going to be, yeah, he's going to have his wee dips and that at times, of course. That's for sure. He's a young man and people tend to forget that. He's only a young man coming from the first division in England. You know, to all of a sudden, playing in European nights, playing in some of the biggest, well, people will say the biggest derby in the world at times, you know. So all these things are so, so important. And he's learned to live with that. He's learned to handle that. And that's why I'm sure he'll only get stronger and stronger. He'll have his wee moments, which everybody does. But he'll, he'll come through the other end of it because he's been there before and he knows how to handle these situations. And that's the thing that pleases me more about him than anything else. He plays with a vision and he speaks with a vision, you know, and I think that's very, very important. Yeah, and, and he thinks about his answers as well. Whenever he's asked a question, he actually kind of goes uh, and then answers rather than just giving a, a stock answer. My big question to you, where's the ceiling for this guy? How good can he be? Not just at Celtic, but, you know, God forbid if he does move on, how, how good can he be? I think the biggest thing for me is, is take your time at Celtic. And I know people think I'm saying that as a Celtic supporter or whatever. That's not the case. There's no many bigger. You know, there's no many bigger. The atmosphere, the full stadiums, there's no many like it. When you get an adulation there, that's as good as anywhere in the world. People knock the Scottish game too often. But when you play for Celtic, please believe me, you can play for anybody. And Matt's got that opportunity because if you can handle the pressure, it comes along with playing and representing Celtic Football Club, you can play with anybody. You know, God willing, he keeps clearing any injuries. You know, he's got the talent to mix with the best. Playing in World Cups and that, I always say the best players have got to be able to handle the ball, you know, at that level. And Matt can handle the ball. The thing is, as well, he can use the ball exceptionally well as well. So he's got a great combination. He's a, a, a level headed young man. He's not going to get carried away with it. He'll make the right decisions and the right steps as he goes along. I know he will get better under the management of this. The, the manager's demands are now the Ange. They're demanding him. His fitness levels. He'll be loving that. He'll be seeing the, the response he's getting from the supporters. All these things make you feel 10 feet tall. And I think. We've got a player in our hands. I think he's only going to get better because the reason I think he's only going to get up because I know he's a very good listener. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree with a lot of that. And hopefully he can reach those heights while, while playing for Celtic. Um, yeah, I, I think we'll we'll leave it there, Peter. It's been a pleasure to have you on. We're, we're building a, a kind of uh, 67 heel heel 11. So we've got Jackie Mack at fullback. Yogi Hughes centre back, you're in midfield, Scott McDonald up front. I think we've got Efrain Juarez, you remember him? I think we've got him probably right right mid or or even centre mid with you. Um, we, we need to get the left hand side sorted out. You got legs then. <laughs> aye. Aye, you you two work well together. So um yeah, we're we're building a side. Peter, listen, it's been amazing to have you on the channel and you know, we we wish you all the best and you you've certainly 
played a part in, in Matt O'Reilly's career um, and that's that's appreciated by us all. I think I speak for everyone. Um, so all the best, Peter. Thanks very much. A pleasure. Thank you very much for having me on.